Welcome today for another episode of the Smile Show. Today we have an interesting guest which you cannot miss. We have a pastor, doctor, an entrepreneur, a man of God. Today you are going to hear his own side of the story. No, no, I said, no, son, you got it all wrong. Because when you talk about the fear of the Lord, you heard this before. When you talk about the fear of the Lord, I want you to t uh, be conscious of my presence. And then he brought back that, that familiar little cliche, you know, that I remember as a young boy, sometimes as a grown man. When I'm about to do wrong, and I'm sure you can attest to this, one of the first thing I do, Brother Britt, is look to see who watch me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, 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 and so he said, son, if you know, if you conscious of my presence, glory be to God, then all day long, that, 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 that scripture, and then he said when that happened, verse uh, 18, he said, when, it, when, it happened, when you're conscious of my presence, uh, 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 then what will happen uh, in verse 18, it says, For surely there is an end, and thine expectation shall not be passed off. Amen? And, and it's very interesting. We thank you for turning into this my show. I am your interesting host, Marie Guato Akaya. So today we have Pastor Dino, right? Yes. I pronounced it right now. Yes, you did. You're welcome, Pastor. Thank you, thank you. We thank you for honoring our invitation, for the smile show, for accepting us to come and interview you today. Today we came to his um, church, his central. Mm -hmm. It's called His Image yes. International. His Image International. Yes. So we are sitting in the central. And I thank you for giving me this opportunity. Well. It's privilege yes, to sit on the my chair. We thank you. We thank you. How are you doing? I'm doing great today. Praise God. Uh, yes. God has continued to bless me and keep me, and I thank Him for that. Amen. How was the service? Service was great today. Um, matter of fact, we've been doing a, a series on prayer, the you know, uh, war room. It's an it's a interesting concept that's going across the United States. Uh, just reminding people that their most powerful weapon is prayer. Amen. And so uh, we're so blessed to have one of our own sons. He just graduated from the university and he's uh, off into mission. And so he preached for us today. So we were just very blessed to have, to see someone who grew up here and uh, loved the Lord. So I was thankful today for that. Amen, amen, that's powerful. Can you tell us about yourself? Yes, I guess again. Uh, uh, of course, I'm Warren Dillon. Uh, I'm originally from Louisiana, and uh, I'm here in Atlanta. I, I came to uh, Atlanta in 1977. I uh, previously worked for IBM uh, Corporation, wow. and I was transferred here to Atlanta. So my family, all, most of my children grew up here in Atlanta. So what brought you to Atlanta? I, I am the... Uh, <laughs> IBM, the IBM, International Business Machine, yes. Uh, they were at one time known as the, Q, the computers. Uh, we didn't say PC or computer, we said uh, my IBM machine <laughs> because they had uh, almost 90% of the, the marketing computers uh, and they're still existing today. Uh, but I, I was very blessed to, uh, to, uh, to be hired with IBM, which was one of the top co uh, companies in the world uh, at the time. and. Uh, Retired, spent 30 years with IBM, but uh, while I was with IBM, God uh, had a different calling on my life, and, and he called me into the ministry, and we started the ministry in his image ministry. Uh, back uh, in 84, we uh, incorporated in 501c3, and at the time we were doing street ministry, we were thinking about evangelizing, evangelism, and so uh, we had a radio program and all of those things, and then later on in 88, we uh, started the Indus Image uh, Christian Church. And then in 1992, God uh, led us because our congregation was almost 90% children. And of course, uh, when you start a church and you have 90% of your congregant is uh, children, you go to God and complain. And I did. And uh, God spoke to me and told me that if I would invest in his children, he would take care of me. And some 
27, 28 years later, I'm still here and God's been providing and it, it, he's been using the children as a vehicle. In 1992, we started our, uh, in his image, our learning center, which is a daycare. So we started investing in our children. At that time, six months old. In this premises? Yes, yes. And, and, uh, and one of the things was that we wanted to make sure that we were inputting godly values into our children at an early age. And at one time, and we still today, we uh, made statement that nobody else can compete with us because we were having those children for at least 12 hours. And for them, because we opened from 6.30 to 6.30, and uh, most of the children, they could see the love of God, and we would show them the love of God, and then also instill godly value through the Word of God. And then in uh, 1998, uh, we had our last daughter and we decided that God was trying to give us another opportunity to be good godly parents. And we knew that Christian education was gonna be key. And so we opened up In His Image Christian Academy where we uh, from kindergarten through 12th grade. So how beneficial is that? Because I have a friend who does not believe in Christian academic for children, like even she said it's too expensive. She don't see the benefit of sending your child to a Christian school. So how beneficial was that for you? Well, for well, uh, to me, Christian education is most important. And one of the reasons for that is that uh, from a Christian education, you get, uh, you learn your academics from a godly perspective, uh, not just from a worldly perspective. And most education comes from a worldly, a secular uh, point of view. But when you can get God's point of view, then you understand the purpose of different things. And now your life can be ordered from God's perspective. And that's the best way because other than that, you're in chaos and you're going contrary to what God purpose in life. So I believe wholeheartedly in the Christian education. Uh, again, you're teaching the children everything that they learn from an academic. They see where God had his hand in it and what God's purpose was, whether it's math, science, biology, or whatever it may be even uh, your languages. You see where God had a purpose and scripturally you can see what God input was uh, toward that. So to me Christian education is the best thing. It's not only teaching the children academic but it's teaching them God's way and when you know God, glory be to God. Paul said that of all the things after he had received all kind of degrees and uh, accolades and accomplished so much in life, he said all of that was worthless. And there was only one thing that was of value, and that was to know God. You so know, many people in life miss their trap. They do like they are not on God way. Mm -hmm. They do many stuff because of money. Mm -hmm. Some people are even doctors, but they are frustrated mm -hmm. because that's not what God wanted you to be. Mm -hmm. But with a Christian education, He will direct your path. You're not just going for the money, but you're going there to save humanity, which is very necessary. Behind the scene, I asked you about that. You have so much on your plate. You told me that no, God has so much on his plate. Yes. And I told you that um, God is using you. Mm -hmm. You told me about Kenya and uh -huh. Uganda. Can you say that again? Can you tell us a little bit? Yes. Uh, in 1999, uh, we, uh, 97, we went, made our first trip to East Africa uh, with a, a sister uh, missionary group. And in 99, God uh, touched our heart, myself and Joel Mason, as Baby Mason husband, uh, and he touched our heart that uh, we were to start building high school for the people of Africa. And so, uh, just, high school. just high school. And so God uh, blessed him where we were able to build an all girls high school in uh, uh, Kenya, Western Kenya. And that's, yes, and that school opened in 06. Where precisely in Kenya? It's uh, in the Homo Bay area, uh, in western uh, Kenya, right around Lake Victoria and uh, Kasuma, around in that area there. Uh, and, that, and again, so we're so tremendous. We, we've seen the hand of God working. And we also have uh, uh, been doing work in Uganda. Uh, God bless and open up a door uh, during the time. So since 97, we've been going to, uh, to East Africa. 
and during that time uh, you had uh, the war going on with uh, Joe Carney uh, in northern Uganda where he was mutilated and, and just wrecking havoc in that part of the country. Well, God opened up a door where we partnered with a family and they own over 500 acres of land. And we were able to partner with them and to establish a farm where the people could come down to the farm and live in peace and tranquility and then provide for that family to live. That farm is still going on today. You would not believe it because it was kind of an arbor bush type area. The farm cooperate with the school together? Yes, it's two different entities. The, 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 the farm is an entity in itself where now uh, it's a medical uh, system where people can come and get medical treatment there. They can also learn different traits uh, in the farm now. And they can also grow different crops and we use that crop to uh, so that they may have cash crop and they can provide for their family, etc. That's wonderful. I know with you and everything, Kenya, the ministry, everything, especially the one in Kenya and Uganda. You have, do you have sponsors? Uh, how, do, how do you get sponsors? Well, first of all, we believe God is our sponsor. That's the first thing. Amen. And then we believe in, uh, we, we have seen the hand of God over those years. Because uh, someone might be watching and say, how can I help this country? What will they do? Yes. Well, if you look at our website, it's uh, uh, Romi, R O M I U S A dot com. R O M I U S A dot com. And uh, that's our website, and uh, that's a link if you want to donate or if you want to make a trip to East Africa or you want to do short term mission work. All of those things are available. Amen. That's powerful. This is the Smile Show, which um, smiling does not only mean that um, you don't have affliction, you have affliction. So can you tell us that incident in your life, that story that you passed through me above everything? Yes. Uh, well, I, I learned, I didn't notice at first, but later on in life, I uh, always learned, I heard a cliche that if you want to uh, understand what God is doing and where he's directing you, to look back at the signposts, things that had happened in your life. And so I've learned, it, and I, I can remember so vividly, at seven years old, uh, that one Sunday evening, I was with my older brother at the time, he was 13 years old, and his friend, who was also 13. And uh, we went, and they went in the Mississippi River to swim. And they went out far, and he couldn't get back in. And consequently, he got drowned. But the other uh, young man, I was on the bank, and he was almost drowning, and I was able to get a stick to reach him and bring him. But I was unable to, to get to my brother. And uh, I had to go home. So he died on the He side. died. He got drowned. He, was, he got drowned in, uh, that Sunday evening. And I had to go home and tell my mom what had happened. And uh, that taught me uh, or prepared me, number one, uh, to face death and to be able to uh, explain death. Uh, and then later on in life, I found out in the book of Hebrew that uh, uh, God mentioned that of all, everything in the world, that the, the number one thing that man always feared was death. And so I interpret that as God preparing me for the, the worst thing that could ever happen and to strengthen me in that area. And I, I, I look at that because uh, I learned that God was with me and that didn't just happen, you know, have happened, but God was directing my life. And the other thing was that I used to wonder why I couldn't reach to, and save my brother and uh, versus the other young man. And uh, the way I guess God internalized that to me was that I was going to be used to help save and, and help people that was not family. And that was so very important because it's normally to help family, but sometimes it's a struggle to help people who are not family. Like what um, Jesus said that um, when they say your mother and brothers are looking for you, he said my mother, my brothers and sisters are the ones around me saving me. Yes. 
So it doesn't really mean that you're biological. It could also mean that people around you, who surround you, who, are, who save God with you. The story about your brother is the trauma and everything at that tender age. I know many people will give up. They will, they will not. It's so much. Because last year I lost my brother and my father. But my brother was much younger. He was 33 going to 34. My immediate senior brother. The grief was so much that when I heard of his death, I stayed like one, three hours without talking to anyone. Just on one spot and everything about it was just you passing through all that and still went through. That was powerful. Was anyway, yes. Pastor, we thank you for coming to the smile show. It was an honor having me and accepting the picture. We know someone who is watching here today. You've been blessed listening to Pastor Dillon's story and we know it will change your life. Before we go, he has a thesis that he wrote. What is the name of this again? Okay, it's a, a biblical study measuring uh, the value and attitude and behavior of you uh, drifting from a sacred worldview to a secular world. In other words, uh, our children, they grow up in the church and uh, they sit on the front row at six years old and as they grow older, they are out the back door. Amen. Before we go, um, I write books. You can find them on Amazon. This Alive Again. We have um, Guinness Success Syndrome. We have what is life. And if you want to get them, you can get them on Amazon. We thank you for turning into the Smile Show. We come on any Wednesday. You can find us on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter. You can email us to your friends and share us. We thank you very much. Thank you.